listen, sometimes we become so conditioned um, to wanting certain things. But it's in the simple things, in the still small voice. And only you know what God has done for you. That's right. And I want you to really take a moment to think about what God has done for you. And it should evoke a response from you when you think about just how good God has been. Uh, I wish I had a praying church in here. It ought to evoke a response from you when you begin to think about, come on, don't think about that name of this. I want you to think about just what God did for you on this week. Chapter 5. Uh -huh. okay. 
starting at the fifth verse. I'm going to read down through verse 11. Hallelujah. Glory. Yes, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, God. Somebody just say he's been real good. He's been real good. I'm a single black female raising a black boy. He's been real good. My baby's finishing his first year of college. Despite being a statistic, he's been real good. I should be homeless right now, but guess what? I got a roof over my head. He's been real
did not leave us to our own device. Now, God, we ask that you speak your servants here. Hide me behind the cross, oh God. Lord, let us only see and hear what you say and do in the midst of these, your people. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength. You are my redeemer. And the people of God said amen. 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 Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Very briefly. Amen. From the topic of he's establishing me. Yeah. Preach the word, preacher. Can you tell that brother, that sister next to you, he's establishing me. Uh, we often, when we hear about the works and the writings of Peter, Peter talks specifically to the pain and the problems that face. Amen. Not just the church of old, but the current day 21st century church. Yes, yes. But Peter does not spend his time to focus so much on the pain yes. and the problems when he talks more about the purpose behind your pain. Can you tell somebody there's a purpose behind my pain? My God, he talks directly to the meat of the matter that God desires to do a work in the life of believers and through problems and pain. He brings you to your purpose. He talks specifically to the meat of the matter in the heart of the believer that is waiting and trusting on the Lord. That even though you're caught between a rock and a hard place, that God is with you in the hard place. And you have to understand that the hard place was designed to establish who you are. The hard place comes so that we are able to go through the testing. The hard place comes so that we are able to go through the trial. Because God is trying to establish me. God is trying to settle me so that my faith would be in him and not in things. He's trying to establish a legacy of belief, a legacy of hope, a legacy of trust in him and not in stuff. Tell somebody he's establishing me. There's a misunderstanding in the Christian world. Many have convinced themselves that once I have surrendered my life to Christ, that I have a bed of roses, and that the path would be made easy. Uh, that I can follow along on a level ground. One that's clearly marked, and there's no dips, and no dumps, no bumps, and no curves, and no pitfalls.
Yes. You have the good old boy establishment. Yes. You, 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 you have the establishment of your family tradition. Yes. You have establishment of, of, of certain corporation. Uh, when the corporation was incorporated, when it became an official company. Do you know that every believer has an establishment date? When you really became a believer, I'm not talking about when you came to the altar and put your name on the roll, but when you went through trials and tribulations and you came off on the other side as pure gold, that's when you were established. And I know that this is not a popular message because we don't want to go through the fire. We don't Church on 
wouldn't get in no crowd for ushering, I'm sorry. And I done left 50 songs, probably 5,000 by now. Guess what? I ain't getting no crowd for leaving the song. But I will get a crowd for going through with the Lord and being faithful. For doing what I was. Yes. So I, I, I came to interrupt. Somebody's praise party of themselves. You've been patting yourself on the back, saying, look what I have done. Look what I have overcome. Last time I checked, if it wasn't for the goodness and the grace of God, you would not be here today. Yeah. 
swipe. And I said, yes, I am a member. <laughs> and here is my ID. <laughs> and so, Bishop, I did not fully appreciate that I can't just jump into this thing. Not when 40 is just around the corner. Now, in my 20s, church, I could go without and jump right back in, and the body would just respond. But can I tell you that I got up on the spin cycle, and my body said, what do you think you're doing? And because I did not allow enough time to get a bite in the back of the class, I ended up, Sister Sandra, on the front row. So now my ego's messing with me. Because I dare not let little Becky behind me show me out. And then breathing and stretching and jumping and sliding. And all I'm saying is, Jesus, get me through. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Please help. Do 
this in your own strength. You must assess the risk involved as well as acknowledging the reality that there is a devastating enemy of your soul. I know that we live in the modern day church where evangelists, we talk so much about the love of God, uh -huh. the faithfulness of God, uh -huh. the righteousness of God, uh -huh. the blessings of God, uh -huh. that we don't deal with the fact that there is another side. Uh -huh. And not only do we convince ourselves that everything is some a uh, scripted reality show. Can I tell you, this faith walk is not a scripted reality show. Yes, yes. There's no happy ending all the time. No, that's right. And I, it amazes me because we built a generation of believers that don't understand when things don't go your way. Uh huh. You don't go away from God. No. There is an enemy. Mm -hmm. And I know we don't talk about the devil much in the 21st century church, but can I just make it plain? There is a devil. There is a devil in Egypt. Yes, sir. Uh, the Bible calls him Satan. First uh -huh. Peter 5 and 8 says, Be self controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around, and this is in the NIV version, yes. like a roaring lion, uh -huh. just looking Look for it. someone yes. to devour. Yes. yes. The Bible has given many names to our enemy wow. that clearly describe his character. He's referred to as the adversary. Uh -huh. He's referred to as the devil. Uh -huh. He's referred to as a roaring lion. Uh -huh. And as an adversary, he is the enemy that pleads your soul to follow his example while he litigates against you. Uh -huh. So what are you saying, preacher? While he's tempting you, he's telling God how no good you are. Uh -huh. That's what it means when it says litigate. The Bible says he is an accuser uh -huh. of a brother. Yes. Right. Uh -huh. So while he's tempting me to sin, he, he's going on the other side and telling everybody all my business. Uh-huh. Uh, he's hitting me with the double wing. He's putting you in a chokehold. Uh-huh. He's trying to cripple you. And as the devil, he is the grand accuser of all the brethren. This title is derived from a word which signifies to strike. Mm -hmm. He's striking against you. Right. He's beating you down. Mm -hmm. He's trying to vex you and worry you to death. Yes. He is trying to literally exhaust your mind. Mm -hmm. right. We love God in our hearts, but in our minds, we are far from Him. Yes. All right. You have a schizophrenic type of faith when your mind double-minded and you are unstable. You love them, but you can't be faithful. You know some people that in relationship, they tell you they love you, but they can't be faithful? Double-minded. Unstable. As a roaring lion, he's hungry, fierce, strong, cruel. Greedy and a pursuer of your soul. He preys on the weak. He preys on the timid. He preys on those that isolate themselves from the household of faith. That? Yeah. That's why we plead with you to come to the house of God. Yes. Okay. Not because we want to fill pews, but because this is where we get our refilling. And this is where we gain strength from one another. The Bible says that you over by the word of the testimony. That's why we share our testimonies. Not because I want you to say, look at me, look what I've done, but I want you to see what the Lord has done. And if you'll do it for me, he's the same God. He'll do it for you. If he saved my mother's crazy children, can I just tell somebody, he can save anybody. That's why we tell our testimonies. Hey, hey.
telling y'all not something I read in a book, yes, something I, I live. And God can save my parents' children. Let me tell you, your children are no problem for God. Amen. Am I telling the truth, other man or all? So, the enemy wants to isolate you. He wants to cut you off. And this is why people fall away from church. Uh, the young people say because they're all in their feelings. Can I tell some of y'all, y'all need to get all out of your feelings. Faith is not a feeling. Faith is a lifestyle. Uh, faith is not in what I feel. Because if the truth be told, and I know y'all think I'm wonderful, but I ain't feeling it sometimes. It is a struggle for me to just make myself do right. It's easier. Truth be told, sometimes it's easier for me to just do wrong. Jerome, it was easier for me to get fast money. But it takes more effort for me to get up day in and day night. Day and night. Night and day. Go meet the man and make an honest living. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If it take much of the heavy, what would you what you need? What you need? I'll get that up in a minute. No problem. What you need? And, and we try to ascribe that same thinking to our spiritual development. Yeah. Yeah. But true development comes through time and process. Yeah. Yeah. Because the process is meant to get some stuff out of you that you allow to attach itself to you. You got some attitudes, you got some ways, you got some spirits attached. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go there today. You got some things that have attached themselves to you that God is trying to deliver you from. Yes. But you yes. want to keep fighting with God and holding on. Yes. All that we would hold on to God the way we hold on to hey. stuff. Hey. 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 The way we hold on We say stuff like, this is who I am. Yeah. I just got to do me. No, you don't need to do you. You need to die daily. You are the reason that you are in the mess that you find yourself in. Don't do you. Stop doing you. Yes, yes. Pick up the Bible. Live holy. Yes. Live righteous. This is the will of God concerning your life. Because if you keep doing you, it's going to kill you. You are going to drive yourself over the edge. And we are coming into church literally on the brink of losing our mind because we keep doing our own thing. Don't say this. 
I said, I just got to go. No, the devil is a liar. I said, take your meds. All of them. And follow the regimen that has been prescribed. Because you know, y'all like to hit and miss. I took one this morning. I don't feel like taking one tonight. That's how I have an 18 year old child, okay? When you don't follow the directions. Oh, that was, too, that was too transparent, I'm sorry. When you don't follow the directions, there are consequences. Mine is living in New York City right now, going to St. John's. When you don't follow directions. Take one one day, miss it for four days. All right, that was too transparent, I'm sorry. I'm go back to my text. I'm trying to help somebody. Y'all go past and pray hard now. You not only have to give God your heart, you have to give him your mind. While we don't over-intellectualize intellectualize what it is we believe, the reason I say you have to give him your mind is because it is in the mind where the enemy will forge his worst battles. I'm telling y'all not something that I wrote on this paper. I love God. But I'm telling you, me, the evangelist, the preacher, the prayer warrior, yeah. who can fast and pray, the enemy has literally fought me Wage in war. my mind. Wage war. And he's trying to literally, from some of you, take your mind. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. If he can take your mind, the rest of you will follow. Yes. We have people that struggle with addiction. I talked about this in the sermon not too long ago, sometime last year, I believe. And they don't struggle with this addiction because they want to be an addict. Right. That's right. Nobody says, hey, Johnny, when you grow up, what do you want to be? Johnny doesn't say, I want to be a crackhead. Susie doesn't say, I want to be an alcoholic. Susie doesn't want to say, I want to be a meth head. We say, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a teacher. I want to be a lawyer. Mm -hmm. But people have so much pain that they have been trying to deal with in their own strength. And so now they're doing things to medicate the pain in their life. And I said to you at the beginning of the sermon, God has a plan for the pain, and he also has the prescription. You have been going from counselor, and I don't know why I'm going here, but I believe that the Spirit of the Lord is saying this. You are going from counselor to counselor, from medication to medication, from uh, uh, focus group to focus group to motivational group to motivational group. Trying to figure out why do I behave the way I behave? Why am I like this? And then some well meaning psychologist says, Well, because your mother did not love you the way that you should be loved, that's why you have trust issues. Or because your father was angry, you have anger issues. And then they begin to help us pacify the conditions that we're dealing with. Somebody ought to just tell the Lord, keep my mind. 
say my mind's playing tricks on me. Yes. Can't sleep because my mind's playing tricks on me. Thank you, yellow boys. Scarface used to say my mind is playing tricks on me. Can I tell you, the devil's playing with your mind and he's playing tricks on you. And you have to stop believing the lies of the devil. Yes. You have to seek out God. Yes. While he can be found. Yes. Knock, the Bible says, and he will answer. Yes. You have to get a support team. Uh-huh. All y'all Lone Ranger Christians, you need a support team. Yes. Somebody that's gonna hold you accountable. Say, now you know you act, now you know. Now you just know. You just know. And I'm not talking about your boo, your bestie, your BFF. I'm not talking about those people. Because, listen, if you can't tell me when I'm wrong, then you really can't be my friend. Come on, Come on. Come on. Come on. I do a good enough job over the state to tell my that a girl. Oh, doing a great job, girl. Look at you. Look what you did. <laughs> Just so wonderful. <laughs> you need something to counteract those voices in your own head. Because it's wonderfully said. Every voice in your head is not of God. It is not the Holy Ghost. And you need to be able to tell the difference. And then when you can't discern for yourself, you need a sister or a brother to say, now you know you ain't acting right. God is not in that. But you got to be mature enough, there's a word, to handle a rebuke. And even when they rebuke you, you can still love them. Let me tell you a couple more things and I have to close. Jesus said, you can say to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and it will be done. If you believe, you will receive what you ask for in prayer. The Lord is asking us to completely trust him. Not, he's not telling us and we probably not going to get a whole lot of likes from here. Uh, he's not telling me to decree and declare what I want. No. That's not what the scripture is talking about. No, sir. This scripture is talking about a level of trust. Mm -hmm. Because I have to have enough trust that what God is telling me to do right. may seem crazy to men. That's right. That's right. But it's right with God. Yes, yes. When he told them to march around Jericho, it seemed crazy. When he tells you to sell out and not to have sex before marriage, people say it seems crazy. When I tell people that I don't drink alcohol, uh oh, sit and say, they say it's crazy. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And I said to them, somebody said, well, you know, this is the standard response that they give me. Jesus drank wine. Uh -huh. I don't have enough time to tell you just so much about that, but. I have to go to what the word says. We read it. The Bible tells me to be sober. Mm -hmm. Be sober. And you just tell me, I just need a little something to take the edge off. Then you're not being sober. If you're taking the edge off, you are now under the delusion of the alcohol. Can I just help somebody here? If you are taking a toke of weed to take the edge off, you are now under the influence of the marijuana. Yeah. And I don't care that Massachusetts legalized it. Same thing, got no business smoking what marijuana. What you say? Medicinal or any other reason. What you I have worked in healthcare long enough. What's Sister Gloria? Sister Gloria is a cancer nurse. There are enough opioids and painkillers to address your needs that you do not need to smoke. Marijuana. I just do that for free. Isn't it? Well, what about the cancer patients? You better call on a palliative care specialist, y'all know that's what I do. And they will help you address your pain. Yeah, Jerome, we said you up. That's exactly what it is. This is seven. I'm crazy enough. Without the influence of anything else. Why in the world do I need to alter my state of mind? Do y'all know? I know I dress it up real good on Sunday. 
But this one right here, it's a battle for me to keep her together. Why in the world am I going to introduce outside influences? Outside influences. You crazy by yourself. You don't need no outside influence. No. You crazy and not crazy like a fox. You crazy to the bed bugs. You don't need outside. I, I don't know why I'm talking about this. I, somebody needs to hear me. You don't need it. Yes. Yes. Uh huh. Because the Walker sang a song where he talked about put it down. You need to put some stuff down, Saints. Put it down. You picked up some stuff that has not been prescribed to you in the Bible. Put it down. Put it. Yes. Whatever you are doing to please your flesh, because that's what's happening when we're taking yeah. in this stuff, is to please our flesh. And in the process, we're killing our spiritual man. You need to put that down. Because while you're pleasing your flesh, the devil is devouring you. He's killing you. He's setting you up for the worst setback. And while he has his foot on your neck, he's not just going to keep his foot there. He's going to kill you. about Samson, great warrior of God. Mm. The reason they were able to get him, he had been seduced. And he let this woman come in and talk him out of his destiny. Talk him out of his purpose. He was a mighty man of valor. Mighty, mighty. He had been set apart. That's why you see preachers falling by the wayside because the enemy is setting them up. He's trying to put a black eye on God. He's trying to kill as many people as he can. That's why the devil is attacking leaders because if he can get the leader, he can get the church. But God said, I got a remnant that has not bought to bail. Yes. Say it, guys. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You don't think, Ooh, can I be real? You don't think I want 6'2", 250 pound, athletic built, laying next to me every night? Yeah. Ooh, I want that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't even take a porky guy.
to taunt me. Look, what, what preaching the gospel got you? A cold bed? You ain't got no man. And then this joker had the audacity to tell me, you almost an old age, you know. The devil is a liar. I'm living my best life 40 months. What you say? But I gotta talk back to that joker because sometimes I'm like, yeah, man, I am about to be 40. Oh, God. And then it don't help when the good mean the church level, baby, you ain't married yet. You ain't found a husband. Are you praying? Yes, I'm praying. I've been praying for 39 years. What kind of crazy question is that? Have I been praying? What do you think? No, I'm just on the mountain top with Jesus. Go home and pray even harder because now she works. Yeah. <laughs> I found out a long time ago that God has way too much purpose in me yeah. and for me. Yeah. And I cannot compromise yeah. 90 for six, two, six figures, 200. Y'all know I like athletic bills. Yeah. Six figures. Two, 50 categories. Yeah. And can I tell you, I had six two, two fifty, 250, athletic build, and was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And was going to make me crazy. When I'm thinking about going in the back of my truck and getting my tire on line, I got to let you go. I have been delivered from her. Get your life, get your life, get your, get your whole life, girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. But I'm not the only one. Y'all try to please people, please family members. You try to obtain stuff, and you're still miserable. You got the house, you ain't happy. Got the car, you ain't happy. Got the 2.5 kids picket fence, you still ain't happy. Can't find happiness in things. Uh -huh. Can't find happiness in anybody else. Richard Smallwood pins it very simply. He says, you are the center of my joy. Joy is different than happiness. My happiness comes and goes, but joy, that stays all the time. Joy will keep me in the late midnight hour when there's nobody else laying next to me. I still got joy.
keeping our pledges to the Lord. Mm -hmm. As we rejoice over the fact that Jesus is with us. Mm -hmm. We can rest upon the truth that like he prayed for Peter, he prays for us. Yeah. It must be understood that while on the mountain, even when you have failed, Peter's denial will certainly prove that he was not yet able to assume the position that God had assigned to him. Everyone who climbed the Mount of Olives sometimes has failed. They have come short and walked with the Lord. However, you will conquer that mountain if you stay with God. Mm -hmm. We know that Peter had two events that led him to be this new and powerful believer. Uh -huh. Peter, who filled the pages of the books of Acts with all the mighty works he did uh -huh. under the power of the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. which also enabled him to write first and second Peter. Yeah. Uh, and John, we read of Jesus' reinstatement of him. Yeah. He tells upon this rock, yeah. I will build my church. Mm -hmm. This is exciting news to us mm -hmm. that no matter how many times mm -hmm. I fail yeah. on my pledge, oh, yeah. I will overcome. Mm -hmm. yeah. Say that. Yes, Say that. Yes, sir. It's at the base of Mount Olive in the Garden of Gethsemane yeah. when Jesus made his pledge to the Father during the desperate prayer. Yeah. Anybody ever pray the desperate prayer? Yeah. He said, yet not as I will, but as your will, which led him to Calvary. Uh -huh. Sometimes his will will lead you to a hard place. Yes. Yes. Sometimes his will will take you to a place where you don't want to go. But you have to know that there is a plan and a purpose. Mm -hmm. And when he finishes establishing you, when he finishes the work in you, you're going to be everything that God designed in his mind, not what we designed. Right. I don't want pain. I don't want problems. I don't want to be persecuted. I want to be on the mountaintop. But in order to get to the mountaintop, guess what? I got to climb. Yeah. I got to get my footing established. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm going to be learn to live victoriously, mm -hmm. I got to learn how to Jerome struggle on the mountain. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. If I don't climb, I won't learn. Mm -hmm. And I have to learn on each level as God takes me uh -huh. higher and higher. Uh -huh. He establishes something else in me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He builds my faith. Yeah. He builds my hope. He builds my ability to discern his voice. Yes, 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 yes. But that's as I climb. We keep talking about dimensions. You can't even if you've ever seen those um in the kid zones and those places they have the rock climbing, mm -hmm. you don't just go from the bottom to the top. I know it's a, a popular hip hop song starts from the bottom now we hear. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I really say <laughs> Trust me, there's somebody in this room that knows what I'm talking about. But in order to reach the top, you're going to have to climb the saints. And if you picture a climbing structure, you know, it's not a straight line. It's not, um, it's not always an easy thing to, to, to grasp. It's not a straight path. And you have to be calculated and strategic about where you place your foot. Yeah. Can I tell you that you need to be calculated and strategic about this next step? Your life literally depends on this. This is why we have to be led by the Holy Spirit and not by my feelings. My feelings would have had me at the altar and three, right about now, I've been pulling all my weave out. Okay? My feelings. Feelings, yes. You have to be in tune with the Holy Ghost. And you gotta talk, Lord, if it's not you, close the door. Yeah. And I want to encourage every single woman in this house, you need to pray that prayer. Lord, if this is not you, close the door. And when he closes the door, leave it closed. Don't you try to knock it open. And that's not just about 
single people. That's in anything. When he says no, he means no for good reason. Hey. I'm reminded of Elder Stewart, our Linda Stewart yes. testimony. She wanted this job at TJX. Yes. Yes. She, we prayed, we shouted, yes. we believed God with her, we fasted, we gave God praise in advance. Yes. She was the final candidate. She wanted that job with everything in her. Mm -hmm. I wanted the job because she wanted the job so bad. Mm -hmm. And she got her heart broken. She did not get the job. Do you know that the person that got that job was on the plane that flew out of here on 9-11? Mm -hmm. If she had gotten the job, she would have she would have lost her life. If God gave you some of the stuff you keep badgering him about, you would lose your life. He's trying to keep you. That's why he tells you no. Who wants to keep good things from their children? Nobody. 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 But I can see, baby, this right here is not good for you. And we don't care like that because we don't want to argue with John. You better tell Johnny no. It will literally save Johnny's life. Please stand. My father used to tell me as a child, my mother was a very strict parent. It bothered me to my core. And I never understood why I couldn't do what other people did. Wanted to go some places, my dad would say no. Wanted to hang with some people, my mother said no. After that, I've been real reflective now, y'all, I'm almost middle age. And uh, I can see now that they recognize that they had to protect the purpose that God had placed on my life. If they had let me go some places or hang with some people, I probably would not stand here today. And I want to encourage all of you today to not to despise. We always say this about churches when churches are small. But I want to encourage this has nothing to do with church growth, church size. Yeah. The Bible says to despise not the day of small, small things. That's right. It's through those little things that God's establishing you. The Bible says we want precept upon precept, line upon line. The only way that you learn is by Him taking you through the fundamental, the elementary. That one plus one, two plus two. I can't go the long division until I learn how to add and subtract. Right. And that's what happens in our faith walk. God's teaching you how to walk this thing out. So I want to encourage you in this house that wherever you find yourself, like the apostle said, uh, in whatever state I find myself, there with I learn to be content. And so if God has placed me in a season of singleness, I'm content. God's caused me to be a widow or mother, I'm content. He's caused some of you to have an empty nest, be content. He's caused some of you to have some people that you thought were going to have your back, leave you hanging, be content. God blocked it, because he's not going to let anything get in the way of your purpose. So if you're here today, I just want to give you a moment. The altar is open. I want to pray for you. Whatever it is. You say, preacher, I'm just having a hard time being content. And I know there's someone in this house. You're more bitter than you are content. Yes. And you alive Because you thought you would be someplace different. Well, he has you in this season for a reason. And there's something that God's going to teach you, show 
show you that you need to learn. And you need to ask the Lord, Lord, open my eyes so that I can see you clearly. 